if you feel like you've tried everything, change everything, diet, block out time for stress management, getting sufficient sleep, and doing things to reduce your toxic burden. And no matter what work, or no matter what you tried, nothing worked. Have you ever come across low dose naltrexone, also known as LDN, as a way to lower thyroid antibodies? In this episode, I want to walk you through what LDN can and can't do and how to think about it in the bigger picture of thyroid healing, especially if you're trying to decide whether you've truly explored your options before committing to something permanent. Naltrexone was originally used for opioid addiction, but at lower doses, hence the name low dose naltrexone, it can modulate immune activity as well as reduce inflammation. LDN is considered an autoimmunity because it has the potential to calm the immune overreactivity in autoimmune conditions such as multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, Hashimoto's, and Graves' disease. There is the upside that it could potentially modulate the immune system and also side effects are minimal, low cost. Again, not too challenging to get a prescription in most cases. As far as the downsides and limitations, if you're trying to decide whether you've truly explored your options before committing to something permanent. So let's briefly talk about what LDN is. I, I have spoken about this in other episodes. Have I've had guests also talk about LDN. So naltrexone was originally used for opioid addiction, uh, but at lower doses, hence the name low dose naltrexone, it can modulate immune activity as well as reduce inflammation. And so typically for years, doses like one milligram to 4.5 milligrams or five milligrams were used. And still to this day, it's still used, but I've had practitioners on the podcast where they've mentioned now that they're using a little bit higher doses, like 10 up to 10 milligrams or 12.5 milligrams, which apparently is still considered to be low dose naltrexone. But as far as why LDN is considered an autoimmunity, the main reason is because it has the potential to calm the immune overreactivity in autoimmune conditions, such as multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, Hashimoto's, and Graves' disease. Now, as far as the research goes, it is limited. There's not a lot of studies showing that low dose naltrexone is successful in lowering thyroid antibodies or, or just autoantibodies, I should say. I mean, really when it comes to thyroid antibodies, I'm pretty sure there's no research I'm aware of specifically showing that LDN, again, we'll talk about the published research where nothing is out there as of now, at least that I know of when recording this, that shows that LDN can lower antibodies in those of Graves' disease and Hashimoto's. That being said, over the years, even though most of my patients with Graves' and Hashimoto's don't take LDN, I have had a good amount taking LDN from a different pr practitioner. And also I've had uh, practitioners on the podcast and they there are some practitioners like functional medicine practitioners who recommend LDN to pretty much all of their autoimmune patients. And the reason they do that is because they see results. Again, maybe not in everybody, and we'll talk more about that, but it's, like I said, it's, it's an option to consider, but if you're looking for research uh, in the published journals, a specific to Graves or Hashimoto's, you're, you're probably not going to find anything. So let's talk about the upsides and the downsides, starting with the upside. So overall, LDN is safe. I mean, it is a medication, but like when compared to, let's say for those uh, listening to this who have Graves' disease and familiar with antithyroid medications such as methimazole and propylthiouracil or PTU, I mean, those come with a lot of side effects. I mean, some people tolerate them well, but they're really known for the side effects. On the other hand, those who are with Hashimoto's taking thyroid hormone replacement, again, side effects are minimal and similar with, uh, with LDN. I mean, there are potential side effects such as sleep disturbances is one of the more common side effects. Uh, but again, most people do tolerate it. Also low cost and also easy to get. So, I mean, especially if you're in the United States, if in the United States, and you don't have a local practitioner who is willing to prescribe LDN, you could visit a website. There's a few of them. Um, one of the ones I like, ldndirect.com, where for about $100, you could speak with a practitioner remotely, and they almost always will recommend LDN and prescribe it, not just recommend it, but actually write the prescription for LDN. If you live overseas, there's ldnscience.org, or even if you live in the United States, 
again, ldnscience.org, and you can do a search for a practitioner who prescribes LDN. Uh, you can also go to your local pharmacy and then maybe ask them, like ask the pharmacist if they know anybody local who prescribes low-dose naltrexone. Uh, so again, it, there is the upside that it could potentially modulate the immune system, but then also side effects are minimal, low cost. Again, not too challenging to get a prescription in most cases. Uh, as far as the downsides and limitations, again, it does not address the root causes. So LDN is not a substitute for eating a whole healthy foods diet, managing your stress, getting sufficient sleep, incorporating regular movement, healing your gut, reducing your toxic burden, all those things, assuming you want to address the cause of the problem, you still want to do that. And also another downside is that some people, again, don't tolerate it. I mentioned sleep disturbances, very common, uh, mood shifts, sometimes headaches, again, not as common. I mean, sleep, sleep issues are somewhat common, but uh, some people take it at night and then they have issues sleeping. And so the, they're, the prescribing doctor recommends them to take it earlier in the day. And then another downside is the risk of false hope or should I say unrealistic expectations? Again, just thinking that this that's going to be it. Just I take LDN, everything's great. And to be fair, there are some people that take LDN and that's all they do. Their goal is just, I'm just like some people take thyroid hormone replacement with Hashimoto's and that's all they do. The difference is that thyroid hormone replacement obviously is, is hormone replacement. LDN is modulating the immune system. But I mean, either way, neither one are doing the doing anything for the cause of the problem. One can argue that LDN is better in a way because it's the thyroid hormone replacement isn't doing anything for the immune system component of Hashimoto's. So someone might take thyroid hormone replacements and then the immune system is still damaging the thyroid gland. With LDN, if it's working, it should prevent that from happening. Even if it does work, it doesn't always work long-term. And again, that's another downside is that it is hit or miss. It's, I mean, I think more so with Graves and Hashimoto's for whatever reason. Uh, again, some people it does work with Graves disease, uh, but yeah, just, uh, just something to keep in mind is that it doesn't work in everyone. And then even if it works and you choose to take it long-term, it might stop working, but it is an option to consider, especially if someone is thinking about, especially with Graves, if, if your endocrinologist pressuring you to get radioactive iodine thyroid surgery, and let's say you're just not doing well with the anti-thyroid medication, you can't take it because you're reacting to it. Maybe you've even tried natural agents such as bugaweed or higher doses of L-carnitine and that didn't help. And so you're kind of stuck and it's like, well, I really don't want to get surgery or radioactive iodine. And maybe you look into something like LDN. If you are looking to do everything you can to save your thyroid, in addition to watching my videos on YouTube, you also might want to subscribe to my free online newsletter, which is called Healthy Gut, Healthy Thyroid. Not only will you get the latest news on how to heal your gut and restore your thyroid health, but during each edition, I'll demonstrate a different blood or functional medicine test marker that relates to healing your gut and or your thyroid. There will also be an Ask Dr. Eric section, where not only can you see questions that other people have asked related to gut and thyroid health, but you can also submit a question for me to answer in a future edition. To subscribe to the Healthy Gut, Healthy Thyroid newsletter, please visit saymythyroid.com forward slash newsletter. Now, I mentioned how LDN is hit or miss, and over the years, uh, I've had a, a decent number of people take LDN. Again, I don't have prescribing rights, so I'm not prescribing LDN. So they're either working with another functional medicine practitioner while they work with me who recommends LDN. But a lot of times what happens is that they took it in the past where they, they, they're they working with me now, but in the past they took LDN. I've had cases where, where someone took LDN, really didn't work, or maybe showed had minor improvements, but really no major antibody shift. And then they came to see me and then we actually addressed the underlying cause of the problem, uh, found, removed triggers, healed the gut, which it, admit, admittedly is challenging. So I'm not making out like it's easy to do that. But again, I, I have seen cases where the LDN didn't help and then they saw me and we addressed the cause of the problem and it did help. And then again, another challenge is if you're taking LDN and at the same tr time trying to address the cause of the problem and you have those antibodies lowering significantly, 
then you don't know if it's related to the LDN or the natural approach. Now you would hope it's related to the natural approach, but you're also taking the LDN for that purpose. And you really wouldn't know until you stop taking the LDN under the guidance of the prescribing practitioner. So that's another downside. Uh, so again, everything comes down to risk versus benefits. And if you're, if you feel like you've tried everything, if you have a, like change everything, diet, block out time for stress management, getting sufficient sleep and doing things to reduce your toxic burden, and maybe even did some functional medicine testing and found some triggers and did things to heal your gut. And no matter what work or, or no, no matter what you tried, nothing worked, your antibodies still remain high. Again, even though LDN is not addressing the cost of the problem, if you tried everything, then maybe that's something to look into. Just again, wanted to remind you that it shouldn't replace the foundations of healing. And there definitely is a time and place for the functional medicine testing. So sometimes you may try something like low dose naltrexone. And again, you might expect clear progress, think the thyroid antibodies gradually improving over time. But remember that healing isn't linear. And it's not just with LDN, but I mean, LDN, we're not really healing, but what taking a natural pr treatment approach. I like to say that everybody who takes a natural treatment approach will see their thyroid antibodies gradually decrease until they normalize. Uh, but sometimes it's more of a roller coaster ride. Sometimes people hit roadblocks. So, but just keep in mind, one approach doesn't deliver. It doesn't erase the possibility of improvement through other avenues. It's easy to try many different things, whether it's medications, supplements, trying different protocols. But what really makes a difference is clarity, knowing which tools are making an impact uh, as well as which aren't and where your focus truly belongs. And because this crossroads is so common, I did put together a recorded session that you can go through at your own pace. In it, I walk you through three areas that can make these decisions less overwhelming. First, when permanent treatments like radioactive iodine or thyroid surgery are truly necessary and when they're not the only option. Second, the overlooked triggers that keep thyroid antibodies high, even when things like LDN don't make a dent. And then third, a decision checklist you can use with your doctor so you can feel more prepared and less pressured in your next visit. Uh, too often, the conversation around medications like LDN becomes black and white, so either take it or don't. Again, most practitioners don't recommend it at all, but like I said, there are functional medicine practitioners who recommend it to all of their autoimmune patients. Um, but I want you to feel like you have more than two boxes to check, that you can make a decision that reflects your unique situation. So if you have ever pin your hopes on something like low-dose naltrexone and you felt let down, this class can give you the perspective you've been missing. It's available right now, and you could go through it at your own pace. Just click the link in the show notes to get started. Or you could also visit SaveMyThyroid.com forward slash masterclass. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode. Hope you found it to be valuable. And of course, I look forward to catching you in the next episode.